Hello everyone, welcome to the Ignition Community Meeting, uh, December edition 2020. Um, we are going to wait a little bit more, like one minute more for some people to come, but um, we have the agenda online if you want to write your name in there so we can meet each other. Um, we will start really soon. Hey, Matthew, I already wrote the link in the comments of the meeting. You will find it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think if people join after we posted the link, they won't see oh, it. Yeah. So we'll probably have to post it again in a few minutes for any other people who join late. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I think we can start with the, we have one point for some announcements we have in the ignition world um, this time and the other big point of this month is speaking about Docker integration with ignition and um, this is a work uh, my colleague Aston uh, and I did for a couple of weeks so we will make the presentation for you and see if that's useful. Uh, for the people here. So please stop me at any point, just unmute yourself and ask any question or any comment you have. Uh, this try to be like an interactive session. So it's completely open to participation. Um, but we have in the agenda, the announcement is the end of life of our blueprint uh, release. It has been with us like one year and a half since 90, 2019 and I think it's the second one we have for ignition after Acropolis and it's uh, finishing this year so it's another thing that is gotten there December so if anyone is using it is anyone here using blueprint at some point or in a project yes take care of me of my writing to the next one and uh, let's start with the thing that we have this month. It's about the Docker integration with Ignition. So I'm going to change the screen. Some slides. Let's try. Yeah. With the presentation. So um, the first question I have for you, uh, it's a bit of introduction for the newcomers to Ignition. So we have Ignition, this new thing uh, in the community of Open Robotics. Ignition Gazebo. We have Ignition Gazebo. So I, I wrote there what, so uh, anyone wants to try to answer this question and tell me what are these different things, which are three, Ignition Gazebo and Ignition Gazebo. If anyone wants to try it, come on. <laughs> ah, Pedro, brave enough. All right, okay. <laughs> Let's go with that. Uh, you have, by one side, we have the Gazebo, what we call now Gazebo Classic. It's the standalone simulation you, many of you probably have used, and some of you with, even with some success on it. And um, the evolution of it, it's, it's not uh, underdeveloped anymore. Uh, the new theme is Ignition Robotics, which is the brief after an evol on evolution of Gazebo Classic Simulator. Ignition Robotics is a collection of libraries so um, I just put some of them in the right side. Uh, one is uh, Ignition Simate, taking care of Simate helpers. There are some others uh, taking care of different stuff. And all together can join one of the libraries, which is Ignition Gazebo, which is making simulations. So you can use the libraries uh, uh, not combined, or you can combine them and use Ignition Gazebo for doing some simulations. So the big question usually is when is Ignition ready for me to use? And I have good news for you, it's probably ready for many cases. And I just put a nice link here, which is gonna open the, the this dome is the name of the last release we have. And this nice page is comparing uh, features from the Civil Classic Simulator and which one are present in Ignition as well. So if anyone wants to Try it, just check this page, and if it's already implemented for you, go for that. That is it. So let's go with 
what we have for this month and the main reason to implement the Docker integration, what's a problem we have, like how to add a new feature to the ignition as simulator, fix a bug, or how to develop, where to start. Okay, because uh, what is going to happen if you approach the ignition family, uh, what you are going to find are different problems. We have like many different libraries in ignition. Uh, each of them is in a different repo and has its own pull request issues and some other things. Um, we have released several versions of the collections together. So there is like the collection of major version of each library design and to be sure that they work together. So we have Citadel or DOM, or the new one to come is named Edifice, and each of the version is supports different platforms. This is the same way that you have the ROS releases, they are coming with different packages and they are supporting in a variety of platforms. This works the same way. So uh, the bad news is like, this ignition library have many interdependencies, interdependencies between them, so you will find that most of the initial libraries depend on initials you make, many depend on initial math and some other uh, interdependencies in that. And there are other external dependencies on other system libraries that you can yes. So uh, the problem we try to solve with this is how someone can create like, an ignition development environment easily. Right, so this is the, the problem. If anyone has found this problem before, here we go. Um, before starting the works, we have like, we put some uh, points for uh, motivation, what is going to be important when we try to implement the solution. The first one is try to make it really simple for the people. I can, I'd say really simple is completely simple. So people can start uh, pretty easy with the ignition development environments and uh, we try them to run on different platforms, the one that are supported in mission. Um, the other is an interesting point is customization. So uh, if people want and know which platform they are really interested in to use, so let's the people decide which one. If they are not interested in that, let's try to select one for them. But the customization is a good point for the advanced users we have. And the last point is one probably you can expect, that is isolation. So we want like uh, respect everyone's host system and don't uh, install many things, into it. right? So this was the boring part, and let's go with the jazz, the real jazz. Um, solution: What we did with Ignition and Docker. So the first thing we did was creating a Docker environment with everything need that someone needs for Ignition development we really install into it. This means installing all the dependencies that you need to uh, build all the mission libraries into it. So people just don't need to take care of it. The other interesting point we found when looking for the solution was to use like Docker volumes. This thing is mapping a directory from your whole system into the container. So this way we try the people uh, if you are using a system that is not supported by a given uh, ignition and distribution, you can develop, make it changes locally, open the container, and try to build and run it there to make your test. So how we do this? We try not to reimplement re not the wheel, but the whole car. This means we, when using a simulator inside Docker, you have different problems. One is you, you really want to have like an X environment, you, so you can see your simulation, which is a good thing. And particularly, you need like GPU support. So if you have like your NVIDIA card in your whole system and you want that inside your Docker environment, um, you probably want to have your same username and user ID inside the container. So when making changes in the container or outside the container, uh, you will have the same uh, permissions and you don't, you don't have the same. So uh, before we re-implement or reinvent something that already exists, let me introduce you to Rocker. Rocker is a wrapper on top of Docker and it's making some things easier for the people. Let me check this thing. So this is a, a 
typical uh, rocker invocation, which is doing is like setting the GPU support for you, X environment for you, and the user uh, will be in the environment for you, and you just run uh, Docker images in this. So this tool is was created in Open Robotics by our college Tooly, and it's a really, really nice tool. So we have this that is going to do part of the work for us. And there is, oh, sorry. There is another part of the work that we need to do for the, for the mission. <laughs> so uh, what we are going to do is let's use Rocker to that. Uh, we are going to do some uh, configurations inside the container for you, installing all the dependencies, and leave anything red. So one of the nice things in Rocker are plugins. So Ashton was good enough to create a Rocker plugin, which is doing all the configuration and setup for you when you are try trying to use Ignition. So let me show you like how this should work. Oh, you see, yeah, that's, this is the command that will make the things for you. So uh, you will use the Rocker, we have seen the NVIDIA and X11 uh, commands before, uh, but the, the interesting thing is we have now this parameter coming with this plugin, which you are using. I want to use this uh, ignition release with these dependencies and on top of this image and just give me a bus to interact. All right. So uh, this is going to do uh, the, all the interesting jazz for you. The point with this is like we were looking into how we can simplify this command. So uh, here you need to know that Citadel is running on Bionic, and this is something that the people may know or may not know. So what if the people want to just develop on top of a Citadel and they don't want any particular version of the operative system? So the next thing we developed was a wrapper. No. Let me see if I can click this. Give me my text. Okay. Good. So um, the second part is we are using GCDEP, which is a wrapper we have for some different operations in Open Robotics. So we create a wrapper for simpli to simplify um, the invocation of the ignition broker plugin. So we create this wrapper, which is a um, simple two words command for that. And you can use this one. So you don't need to know what, what the wrapper is going to do. It's going to select the default distribution for you. So you don't need to know if it's working on Bionic, if it's working on Focal, or if it's working whatever it should be. But you can pass the command here if you know it and you are looking for a particular version. But if you don't know, you can just run this. So um, here is how can how we use the whole thing together with the volume. Uh, here is passing all the arguments. But the good thing for this is like you can just simplify the thing without uh, passing all the arguments in the case you are not interested in. Yeah. Any question until this point? The next thing is <laughs> is Aston trying to to show you how this work in real life. Do you want to wait for that, or you can make questions at this point? Otherwise, I think we can go into a live session, which is going to explain this better than yep. Aston, all yeah, yours. Um, I'll share a screen with you guys. So, Uh, can everybody see my screen okay? Great. Uh, so I'm just going to show an example of how to create um, a, an, a Docker environment with Admission Citadel installed. And we'll load in a couple of Admission repositories and build those from source as well. Um, so on the right hand side, if you guys can see, I have a workspace set up. And um, in the source folder of my workspace, I just have two Admission repositories. Ignition CMake and Ignition Fuel Tools. Uh, so on the left here, if I just run the gazebo dev command, um, asking for help, then here it mentions the Ignition Docker environment arguments. 
Um, if I go ahead and request more information about that, uh, we have a few options. So um, as Jose mentioned, you could pass in your Linux distribution. Uh, right now we're supporting Ubuntu Bionic and Ubuntu Focal. Um, and then you could also pass in any rocker arguments that you would like to specify and then volumes that you'd like to mount. Um, so we believe that most people will probably be interested in the volume flag because that will allow you to pass in um, repositories from source so you can build a mission from source. So that way if you're working on a feature or pull request or bug fixing, um, you could just run this command, pass in your volumes, and you don't need to worry about um, creating, you know, different environments, working on different features. So, uh, so this command, for example, will run. Um, we're going to start a container with Ignition Citadel, and then I'm going to pass in the workspace that I showed you all on the right. And in the container, we'll just mount this into a directory, just workspace starting at root. Uh, so the first thing to notice when you call this command is it'll actually tell you what command is being called under the hood. So as Jose mentioned, we're trying to simplify this command as much as possible. Uh, so it's automatically going to detect your graphics card support. So in my case, I have NVIDIA graphics and it finds that. Um, and it will forward your X configuration so you could view GUIs. And then it'll also pass in this user flag, um, which is necessary for using X server forwarding, especially for things like if you want to view Firefox in this container um, for documentation and things like that. So um, let's see. So first thing to notice is there's also all this output below. Um, these are just the outputs of all the Docker files that are run to create this configuration for us. Uh, so what this container has for us is it has not only Ignition Citadel built from uh, all the binaries installed from Ignition Citadel, but then it also has all the build dependencies. So if I go ahead and just run an example from Ignition Gazebo um, right now, show another screen. Uh, we can see this. We can see this example gazebo command that is running. We have these actors that are moving in a scene um, on this example world. So, if users just want to use Ignition and they don't need to build anything from source in particular, um, they could just go ahead and call a container and have everything ready that they need to use. But likely that most people will probably need to build um, something from source. So in that case, if we go back, um, if we go to the workspace. So once again, we have the two repositories, CMake and Admission Field Tools. Um, we could go ahead and build this workspace using Colcon, which is uh, the recommended build tool if you're using more than one emission repository. So if we just call Colcon build, um, it will go ahead and build all of the packages for us. So Ignition CMIT has been built. Um, Ignition Fuel Tools will finish in a few seconds here. And then as a user, you would just need to um, source this workspace for those who are familiar with that term. And then in this container, you will have um, your source install ready for you. So if I just source the setup file, and in this terminal, I could go ahead and use my source installation. Um, and then just like anything else with Docker, uh, we could always open up another bash session inside. And if we once again source the setup file there, um, and we could use a source installation here as well. So if you need multiple terminals, anything like that, um, go ahead and have that set up. Um, I guess one other thing that might be worth mentioning is um, we have a lot of things set up like um, Doxygen and the code checker, CPP check. Um, 
So for example, here, if we run make doc for fuel tools, then we go ahead and generate our API documentation. And then we could run Firefox and pass in the path to the Doxygen files and view documentation there. Um, if we do, let's see. Yep, if we do make code check, um, here we go ahead and we run the static code checker. Um, so as we see, that passes here for ignition fuel tools. And I think those are all of the, the main features. Um, so let's see, Steve asked, is this to support different architectures if we wanted to test Citadel in ARM64? Uh, we don't have that yet. I believe that would be future work. Is that right, Jose? Yeah, it's th that is right. In we are building some layers on top of Docker and on top of Rocker, um, so it's not up to us to just um, configure any ar particular architecture. So I will try just to run it using the QMU images uh, directly on this. So you will need to pass the the QMU image at the end of the of the GC dev command, but it should work. Thanks. Yeah. In the way that it's going to do exactly what I will do manually. In the sense, spawn the QMO image, install the ARM repository for you, install the whole suite, and just uh, pass the volume with your sources for that. So yeah, I think it's it should work. I cannot guarantee, but it should work. I think Carlos had a question as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm imagining that uh, like a common workflow for this could be that I enter into the, or I, I run maybe the GC dev command, and then I enter into that container. And as you mentioned, like I might be able to compile, I might run maybe Gazebo or something similar or Ignition Gazebo. And then eventually I might, maybe I need to edit my code. So maybe I need access to my editor and potentially I might push some changes to GitHub. So um, I guess the main question is how do I do that? So I can guess maybe that, that the, the answer to that is that you should mount like multiple volumes maybe. Um, so like, like, can I mount my .ssh directory from the host? Can I mount my bin? directory where I have my editor, so. Yeah, yes, that's a good question. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, so some of the rocker, some of the rocker arguments um, allow mounting of things like SSH. If you wanted to do that, um, you could use the rocker argument command. So if, I'm, if I exit out here, I'll close this, but if we type in um, rocker.h, there's a SSH command here. You could forward your SSH agent. Um, another option is to just modify and do any source control outside the container. So um, if I run this container again, start it here, um, on my right hand side, outside the container on my machine locally, if I go into, let's say, fuel tools, for example, um, I have the history, the git history, um, you know, I can modify any files here. So let's just say I make a change and then, you know, I could commit the file locally. Um, and since it's a volume, that change will be synchronized with what happens in the container as well. Um, in fact, if I take a look at the file in the container, we can see the changes here. So I think those are two options. Um, Ideally, you could, I think ideally the, the goal is to have the container really just be for like building and testing code. And on your local machine, you have all your development tools, you have your source control set up there that you can use. Um, but it is possible to pass in like SSH agents and things like that into the container if you want to do it all there. You, you might need to install your development tools and things like that as well if you want to do that in the container though. Yeah, and I can propose a way of doing what Carlos is proposing, like you are proposing to spawn the container and use it as a development 
environment. So you don't touch locally that files, but go into the container and do all the development in the container. Right? Could, it could be that, or, or it, it, could be, be, it could be just that maybe I launch Ignition Gazebo and I want to open maybe a log file uh, yep. with my editor. So there is a really nice argument in Rocker that you can pass in GCDEP, like using Rocker args, which is called home. And what this is going to do is to mount all your home directory inside the container. So that is going to bring all configurations with you if they are in dot .files inside your home. Yeah, I think we can show that. Yeah, look, Aston is doing that. So uh, if you put that home, it's going to take all your home directory inside the container. So your user and your home directory are going to be there. So your beam configurations, git configuration, anything in dot .files is going to be there. Yeah. The bus, yeah. This is really cool. If you want to use the container as your main development environment instead of your local machine, that is my recommendation. And we have a, an example comment on the um, GZ dev page that show how to use like home, for example. So there's some references there. Thank you. I think Rufin had a question as well. Uh, I just wanted to tack on to that point. Um, can you hear me? Yes. OK. Um, so you may want to take a look at uh, ADE uh, in the autoware sphere. Um, they, I think this sort of arose at the same time that Rocker was first starting, or it's sort of an independent idea of yeah, using Docker containers for development building. Um, and they sort of take it one step further in terms of like adding configuration files and making everything sort of functionally modular in terms of mounting volumes. And um, in addition to like mounting the source code as a volume, so that makes it sort of transparent and that you can edit the source code on your host system with your, you know, your IDEs and whatnot, and then have your compilation environment in the container. Um, you can also take that step further where you uh, mount your development peripherals as volumes. Um, so this is like when Atom was really popular. So um, they had volumes for different versions of Atoms that were pre-configured. And I think that was sort of helpful for, um, for the development team in Autoware that they had a consistent development ecosystem everyone using the same plugins, everyone had the same code completion, uh, everyone had the same debugging tools, and that simplified the onboarding process, I think, significantly. Um, it's pretty complex if you like look at how ADE is like configured, um, but I, I'm, I'm rather sure, certain that the same uh, feature set could be completed with, with Rocker and that um, maybe your volume mounts a binary install of VS Code Server. And so then from your host, uh, you would just, you know, attach your VS Code client to the VS Code Server inside the container. And then you would get all the same kind of features of, of code completion, usability, accessibility fe uh, features for your, for your host, but uh, the same integration in the container. So that's a good compromise, I think. Um, I know you guys are taking that, that division of building versus development, but uh, I think it can help uh, the story if you if you add another layer that's still separate, but uh, incorporates sort of where you can check in your development environment. Sounds like a useful tool. Uh, Rafin, I didn't hear about it before. Do you have a link at hand, please? Oh, it's there. Thank you, Chris. Yep, we are open for more questions. Ooh. Anyone has any experience trying to work with Gazebo Classic on Docker or trying to work with Ignition on Docker or we can? I, we are happy to hope. listen. Uh, I was going to ask um, 
There, there was an issue on OSRF Docker images, and it kind of stalled. Um, but the, the idea of uh, starting an official library image for Ignition, like we have with Gazebo, so it would periodically provide official tags for new releases of Ignition, make it fairly seamless for users to um, download and build off uh, release binaries, um, sort of provide a canonical uh, setup of Ignition. So, you know, there's all those little things that kind of make, you know, your life easier by maybe prefetching the simulation world. So when you first start Ignition, it doesn't spend like 30 seconds downloading things or yep. um, defaulting ports so people know what port they need to export and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think is, this is like future work. I have a couple of items here. Uh, I think you are mentioning this issue, right, Rafael? The one we have open in uh, Docker images. For that. Yep. So that is totally on my list. And I, I recommend people use the Docker, the Docker Hub images for Gazebo rows and other things. So we should find a bit of time to uh, implement this for sure. So that is open for the future work. I want this to be solved uh, sometime soon and just have the same uh, ignition images that we have for uh, Gazebo Angles. So you are totally on track. Uh, but, uh, thanks for the reminder. Hey, um, yeah, this, uh, this actually might be fairly simple to do because um, in the ignition rocker, um, plugins that we have. We already have a Docker file that's kind of doing this, but then in, in our tool, we're just, we're using a base image of just Ubuntu Bionic or Ubuntu Focal. So perhaps we can migrate that Docker file over to Docker Hub, uh, make some official images, and then base this tool on those instead. I, I think that might be possible. So we can look into it though and see what happens. One thing in the, the ROS, uh, images. We have the uh, official library images that are based on the release distros. And then on the OSRF ROS org, um, we host some development images that make it easier to like build ROS from source, um, as well as a sort of a fat archive export of the nightly build. So if people like, want to test the nightly builds, um, they can seamlessly switch the Docker tag that they're building from, and they're interchangeable because they both have the same file format, the same entry point, the same whatnot. So uh, it makes it easy for folks to switch between distros or uh, different images. So I, I think that's a helpful pattern to, to keep with. Totally, yeah, totally agree with that. Uh, we should work on that. Uh, the other thing I had on the list for the future work uh, uh, was like, uh, we have been uh, showing how to spawn the containers. What is going to happen if you just close your system or exit the container, it's going to be destroyed. So be careful with that at this point. <laughs> be careful with that at this point. <laughs> that is because Rocker is using uh, the RM parameter unconditionally, but this is getting fixed. So no problem for that. So someone is, is doing a simple pull request. We need to look into that thing uh, so the containers are not destroyed when you close them. So be careful on this. This is uh, so. Yeah, I the think worst case scenario is without is with the RM flag. You would have to rebuild um, any repositories that were built originally. But hopefully, um, with this fix, you know, you only have to build once, and then if you uh, close the container and come back, it's still there. You you definitely want to get in the habit of treating containers as ephemeral assets. Um, treating them as virtual machines is probably a, a big mistake that a lot of my lab mates first encounter. It's like, oh, I built my entire system and then I rebooted my computer and clean Docker purge or whatnot. Now it's all gone. So uh, yeah, definitely be a little more disciplined than like how you like layer things between volumes and what's in the temporal file system in the the container. You can have, of course, commit containers into images, but that means they just they're just huge and they're fat. Um, but it is a way of like if you want to share some 
weird configuration of a container with someone else, you can always commit it to an image and send it to them. Yeah, we we recommend um, any files that you're working on and that you need permanently to use with the volume uh, flag in this setup. So that way, um, you have that once you get out of the Docker container for for those reasons as well. So any repositories, especially that you're working on, make sure that you're mounting those locally so you have those changes permanently and you don't lose your work. Any more questions, use cases? Uh, we are still in time. So I'll just add a few more things, Jose. Um, so a couple of things to note is, um, yeah, I think right now we this is supporting Ubuntu Bionic and Ubuntu Focal. And in terms of ignition releases, I believe it supports Citadel, Dome, and Edifice. Um, we did not use Blueprint support since that is going to be end of life at the end of this month. Um, and then if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, um, you will need to use NVIDIA Docker 2 to have that support work. Um, and all these things are listed as requirements in the Ignition Rocker repository. Uh, after this meeting, we could probably put a post out on, on Discourse or something. Cat, I don't know, you probably have a better answer out of, with these links so that people has this as a permanent resource so they could go back to it later um, if they need them. Cat just said yes to me. So yeah, we'll, we'll put a post out on Discourse uh, with, with links to these repositories so that everyone can have a permanent history and access to them. OK, we still have time, more things. Don't be shy. Otherwise, I think we have some nice things to show you. Uh, I think Luis or Kat maybe want to jump in. And share the screen for showing some uh, ignition developments that the community done during last weeks. I think they are pretty famous. Yeah, I don't know, cats. Do you want to share it, or I can also just share my screen here right now? Cats, cats audio is broken, so one of us will probably have to. Okay. Um, it can. I can share the screen here. Just in case. Um, I was not prepared for this. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I hope I'm sharing the correct screen. Uh, so yeah, like Kat suggested that we added some some like uh, nice projects from the community that we saw um, over this month. And also, like I added some things that we've seen before, and even came up during these uh, community meetings before, but we never really like shared them and, and really displayed them. So I, I added the links here, um, just to to bump the awareness for these things. So, for example, this one is very cool. Um, uh, a project to randomly generate crop fields for for simulation inside Ignition using Blender. So that's pretty cool. Um, they have a bunch of links there. Um, I should disclaimer, like these are all things that we found in the community. It's not stuff that Open Robotics is developing. Um, so there's this nonlinear dynamic battery model plugin that you guys can check in this repository here, um, which is also nice. This one is for Gazebo Classic with Ross. Um, Another one to show is uh, Ignition Movie 2. And I saw that Andre was here. I don't know if he's still here. Um, but yeah, we noticed this. Uh, someone from the team brought it up. I think it was Adisu um, that Andre is inter in interfacing Ignition with Movie 2. He also opened some pull requests um, to against Ignition to add some more stuff there. Um, so that's pretty cool. It's using Foxy, uh, Movie 2, and Ignition Dome if people are interested uh, in using MoveIt with Ignition. That's there. Uh, and Luis, just to chime in, it looks like Andre is still here. I don't know if, I, if I'm putting him on the spot, but is there anything else you want to say about this as well? Um, not really. Um, so this current version is not using gross control. Uh, it's just a custom plugin that 
has a BID for each joint. So uh, it's not similar to the way uh, Gazebo Classic would be using movies. It's a bit different. Um, may I ask, Andrew, uh, why are you not using the reverse controls? Because they are not yet there, or there are other reasons that? So last time I looked at it, it was still under development, and I wasn't personally feeling ready to include it in Gazebo. So this was like a quick workaround for me, uh, just to get it working. Thanks. Yeah, even the Gazebo Classic Rust2 control um, uh, bind, like bindings, uh, people are still developing because they're, they're still um, not completely there yet. The Rust2 control is going under a lot of development right now. Once they, they are uh, settled and they are released into Foxy, we can look into integrating actual Rust2 control and, and integrating it here. Um, but I think this is totally a valid approach as well, right? Like we can have both of them. I don't think one excludes the other. So that's very cool. Thank you, Andre, for sharing. Um, then this project, I think, I okay. Can I question on that? So what, yeah. what does ROT2 control give, or what will it give that this doesn't do? Uh, is there, can someone explain the, yeah, what, what would be missing? Um. So I guess the ROS control too should be, would be implemented in more of an action way where the execution itself, uh, like it would have a feedback about the execution in ROS. Uh, whereas for this one, it's, it's more like the, the planning is decoupled for the execution itself. And there is just uh, a feedback message. Thing. Um, so it, it's not very tightly integrated. <laughs> the, the integration between ROS2 and Ignition is not very uh, tight as it would be with ROS2 control. Okay, thank you. Someone else has a better idea. Yeah, I, I think that the implementation using ROS2 control would be closer to what you would have in the hardware. You would also be using the same interfaces um eventually which is a little bit different here okay thank you that makes sense cool so the other one was uh tesseract ignition i think this came up uh before but we didn't add a link to it so i just wanted to show um this that came up from the ross industrial uh People, they are doing some sort of also um, planning uh, for, for industrial arms using Ignition. The interesting thing here is that this is not a simulation. This is just visualization of the, the planning. So they are not using the entire Ignition stack, which is cool because that's part of uh, why we separated the stack into several libraries. They're using like the rendering, the GUI. They don't use any physics or anything like that. Um, so there's the link to the blog post there that people can see. And another one is the Gem Ignition project. I don't know if the, any of the guys from Italy are here, um, but this has been one of the first projects that has been using Ignition, and it's very cool that they have this um, machine learning uh, uh, interfaces on top of Ignition using Python. Um, so that they're doing all sorts of training uh, using Ignition, if people are interested. Uh, oops, I closed the wrong thing. Is there anything else that people would like to bring up? Any projects? It can be Ignition or Gazebo Classic. Is, uh, what's the migration status for um, the ROS2 Ignition plugins? Or, are there any uh, plugins that are still lacking? Oh, no. Um, behind the Russell and Gazebo plugins? Yeah, we talked a little bit about Ross in the uh, last month's meeting. Um, so the to sum it up, the the approach in Ignition is a little bit different from a Gazebo Classic. We're doing mainly a transport bridge. 
Uh, besides the transport bridge, we're currently not planning to develop any uh, more like tight integration between Ignition and ROS uh, for the time being, even though it is completely possible. So if people are interested, they can develop like their ROS like native plugins for Ignition, but that's not something that we're focusing on right now. Uh, we've been using the, the bridge for some of our projects and it's been working well, like Andres uh, Move It To uses the bridge and, and that seems to be working okay. Um, so we don't have any plans right now. Okay. And the bridge, is it bridging protobuf like in Gazebo? Yeah, it bridges ignition messages, which are protobuf based uh, okay. to ROS1 and ROS2. Okay, thanks. Is it possible to port existing uh, plugins or is there, are the APIs similar, I guess? Or is it going to take like our complete rewrite to like, say you want to port like the diff drive plugin, something simple? Yeah, it, it is slightly, it, it's it's a completely different architecture. So um, like, for example, there is a diff drive already, but what happens is that right now the diff drive is completely ignition native. Uh, and then you can bridge that to the your ODOM topics or twist messages or, or all of that to ROS or one or two. So there is a clear separation of concerns where everything that is logic lives, it's pure ignition, and then everything that is transport is bridge through the bridge. That's how we've been doing for, for a lot of the controllers, for a lot of the sensors. Uh, we're, we're not creating like a Gazebo ROS camera, a Gazebo ROS diff drive. Um, they're all ignition plugins it's that are bridged. Ignition diff drive or something like that, and then you run a, a bridge in between, so you can send it ROS commands. Those get translated to the native ignition, like protobuf based uh, IPC, and then um, that's all it listens to. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for explaining. What do you think, Jose? I think we can wrap it up unless someone else has anything else they want to bring up. Ashton? Uh, it looks like Roman also posted a question uh, about camera pose SDF. Um, Dolly ignition gun. Let's see. Roman, do you have a link to that ignition demo that you're referencing? Yeah, about the, uh, what Matthew just mentioned about the plugins in Gazebo Classic and Gross, the problem we faced uh, long ago and years ago is that they were, uh, the people were duplicating the logic of the plugins in both Ignition plugins, or oh, sorry, Gazebo Classic plugins by one side and Gross plugins or Gross code by other side. So we didn't have any clear separation where the logic of the plugin Diff drive, uh, some of the things like sonar or camera uh, go. So the people was re-implementing the thing all the time. So we think it's better to have them natively in the ignition side at this point and just interact with them from works. So that was the reasoning behind the decision. So Ruffin shared the link of the, the conversation that we had about yeah, the, the plugins and the separation and the bridge. And Roman is looking for the, the camera issue that he's talking about. Just narrating what's going on so there is no awkward silence. Uh, 
Stephen, I just want to say I, that's an awesome background. It's a real treat. Yeah. Uh, the uh, rendering is really realistic, huh? Ray tracing capability. You fit that in your tiny ultrabook? What's an ultrabook? Like, I don't know, you fit it. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's it's a it's a monstrous ThinkPad. Doesn't quite qualify as an ultrabook. <laughs> yeah, Steven's actually using the ignition rendering to get that realistic profile in the background. Right, Steven? Yeah, you can tell you can tell it's fake because of how overexposed my face is. So I'm ju just uh, replying to Roman here. So the what he's um, talking about is that like on S the SDF spec has a camera tag inside GUI and that has a pose. And Ignition is currently not respecting that. The way that you can set the user camera pose is within the Scene 3D plugin. Um, that's not the only thing that has a, that is different between. Um, a Gazebo Classic and, and Ignition when it comes to the SDF spec. And that's something that we need to address, like whether we're going to support the full SDF spec, whether we are going to remove some things from the SDF spec to delegate it to plugins. Um, but yeah, Roman, you're right that currently it does not work, but there is a workaround which is to add it inside the plugin. Um, and yeah, if people have opinions on, on what would be the best path going forward, uh, be sure to speak up. I see that Siddharth has his hand raised. Uh, yeah, hi, I have a question. Uh, this is not related to Ignition. Uh, it was one of the earlier comments uh, which uh, was treating the Docker uh, environment as a virtual machine. So I, I am currently on uh, uh, Ubuntu 20.04. And uh, I have set up a ROS melodic uh, environment. Uh, so I have a uh, I have like written a Docker file myself, which has uh, a pseudo enabled user. And uh, what I uh, achieve in that is uh, along with a script uh, shell script, I mount my uh, uh, Catkin workspace, and uh, I'm able to uh, like uh, work in a developer environment which was uh, like just as if i was in ubuntu 18. so uh, is this uh, still uh, like treating it like a virtual machine or is this a fine practice in terms of your permissions um you'll find that the rocker has the user arg and it's doing some magic behind the scenes onto the docker image you build from uh to do the permission uh, remapping. So like, you know, you, whatever user ID and PID or you know, GID you have on your host machine, it's going to instantiate a user that like that in the container. So it's just very transparent. And I mean, before this, you'd have to worry about touching files while in the container because you're root. And so then suddenly when you make files, you can no longer access on your host machine, make things kind of complicated. Um, so Rocker will simplify that for you in terms of your question was more about permissions and exchanging files. Uh, and an another question was uh, about mounting uh, directories. So I have uh, like very soon realized it becomes cluttered. And I believe uh, that with Ignition, uh, that might be the case sometimes too, right? Repeat that one more time. Sorry about the cluttering with the mounts. I, I'm not sure we got that. Could you repeat that, Siddharth? I don't think. Yep. Yeah, uh, uh, if uh, you you are uh, like this is at least uh, for the script or uh, shared script that I have written. Uh, since I'm. Uh, mounting several uh, of my uh, host uh, machines uh, directories into my uh, docker container so the uh, the script the line is becoming quite uh, lengthy and cluttered in some sense and uh, i haven't honestly uh, tried ignition yet but looking at the command that is run i believe it would be uh, 
becoming lengthy and uh, uh, cluttered with the uh, increasing number of directories that you mount. Yeah, so, so that you're saying you want to, yeah, you want to mount multiple volumes and yeah. wondering how that could be done with this, right? Yeah. Um, so essentially, when when you mount multiple volumes with this um, IGN Docker Dev command, um, you'll do the typical Docker syntax of local path and then colon um, container path. And then you'll use um, two colons to separate the next volume. So um, it'll be a pretty lengthy, depending on how many you have, it could be a pretty lengthy chunk of text for your volumes. But the reason why we set it up that way is because by separating through multiple colons uh, for the next volume, it still gives you auto completion, at least on Unix systems, on your file system, so that you don't have to manually um, type out your pass, you can still tap complete for multiple volumes. Yeah, Does I was thinking on the lines of config files, like uh, I'm not sure if it's directly applicable, but uh, doc compose uh, does have uh, it nicely, uh, like uh, in a nice syntax, which is indented. You can define it once and you can keep reusing. Do you think that can be uh, applied for Rocker as well? I have an idea. What about if you use a Docker file using the system you want, and after that you just uh, define in that Docker file the volumes you want to mount, just create an image with that, and just run that image instead of using Ubuntu uh, Focal. So you have my Ubuntu Focal whatever thing with all the uh, volumes in there. And you can use Rocker or any other, or plain Docker on that, or whatever you want to use on that image. So you have all the mappings. Uh, yes, done once, and after that should be the work. The the other thing is anything you can do in Rocker, you can do in Docker Compose. Uh, the Rocker will generate the exact CLI that it passes to Docker Run because it's a factor wrapper, and then you can use that to fixate it in a Compose file. And then you also get more options, the more advanced things that you might need for Gazebo, like uh, software defined networking, or um, you can use uh, the host interface in Rocker, but maybe something more complex. Like you have two containers, and you're trying to simulate like an AWS an instance where uh, you have two gazebo servers and they're talking to each other over a particular port and whatnot. Um, that might be a case where you might have to actually dive into Compose rather than just using uh, Rocker. Yeah, perhaps. Um... Perhaps we should add this, Jose, to uh, something in future work if uh, we want to kind of simplify this with the Ignition Docker Dev. Uh, we could add something there to look at. Totally. It can be implemented by like having a config file and you pass to the tool or have another file. Yeah. yeah, thanks. It sounds awesome. Yeah, the, the tool we presented is, is still pretty early in development, so we are very open for any more suggestions or enhancements, like uh, Rufin's suggestion of ADE, that, that's going to simplify things, hopefully, for us. So any, anything else like that, we're all leaders. When, when you guys have been using it thus far, uh, I've been using Docker in sort of two patterns. I either mount my entire workspace into the volume, including like the Colkin workspace or the build, the, the source and the install. And then sometimes I might only uh, mount the volume of the source. And so like it's convenient sometimes to mount the build and install because uh, you know CMake will like see the artifacts and it'll cache and you can kind of build things faster. But there's the risk that if you change the volume the image underneath, you might, you know, have a different ABI breaks. And so sometimes it's some better discipline to never mount the build volume and that forces you to Recompile every time. Yeah. I was afraid of the toolchain change between your whole system and the, and the container when you are mounting like the build and binary things. It's you're going to find some surprises. Maybe we should wrap up here. It's been an hour. Um, Roman, you're welcome to keep. Uh, like continue the conversation maybe on gazebo answers or gazebo community um, or 
in, come back in the next community meeting next month. Uh, we don't have a topic yet. If people have things that they would like to listen to in these meetings, please speak up, uh, bring it up with us on community or an issue tracker or whenever, wherever you think it's, it's better. If people are interested in presenting to, if you have a cool project using Ignatian or Gazebo that you want to talk about that, you know, to also speak up. Uh, any closing comments, Jose and Ashton? Uh, the only comment I have is that we'll we'll work on getting a post out on uh, I think on the discourse page, which will give links to the tools you presented today and everything else that was discussed in the meeting. So I think in the next week or so, if you guys keep your eyes open for that, um, that'll be there in case you're interested. Thanks everyone for coming. Nice to see you, people. See you next time. Bye.